Advanced Studio Classroom is on the air. Welcome to our advanced class, your window on the world. And today, we're going to talk about things that might help you at work. Thanks for joining us today, friends. We hope you enjoyed the program yesterday when we talked about laughter, and we talked about laughter helping us at work. And that was kind of an interesting lesson yesterday. Didn't you think so, Jack? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I like to laugh just as a part of daily life and to see it supported by some medical research and some business research that it's good for productivity. Well, that makes me even happier. Well, it's nice to know that work can also be fun. Isn't that true, Carolyn? It is. We don't need to be stressed or anxious all the time and just feeling all this pressure from our jobs, even though our jobs can be stressful, but we can try to alleviate or relieve some of that stress through laughter. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just the idea when you say the word work, it sounds like something kind of hard. And then you say play. Oh, that sounds like fun. So whenever we just say work, it kind of brings stress to some people, doesn't it? Mm, Sure. It's not something that we necessarily associate with being fun. But if some people say, I really enjoy my work, you say, really? You know, mm. but I think I enjoy my work. Do you enjoy your work, too? Yeah, I enjoy my work. And you enjoy being here talking to everybody? Absolutely. Man, I'm so happy that so many people like to listen to our radio programs. I mean, uh, I always think it's pretty awesome that we get to talk and, and so many people are listening to us. So right. thanks for joining and us, listeners. Right, that work, see? Yeah, yeah right. how about okay. that? <laughs> okay, well, we're, we're going to start today. What page are we on? We're on page 39 in your magazines, so open them up if you haven't already and join us for our lesson on August 27th. Okay, what is the title of the lesson today? Can Chiropractic Care Help Fight Presenteeism at Work? Well, that seems like kind of a new word, so we'll find out more about it. So let's read that first section down through line 22. Can chiropractic care help fight presenteeism at work? There's a name for what may be ailing some businesses and their employees. Presenteeism. That's when people show up for work but don't perform at full capacity and for one big reason. Definitely not to be confused with those who routinely waste time at their desks, say, watching the latest cat video go viral. That reason? Underlying health problems, including chronic conditions like back pain, headaches, and arthritis that leave them muddling through the day. Underlying the research on presenteeism is the assumption that employees do not take their jobs lightly, that most of them need and want to continue working if they can, the Harvard Business Review reported. Well, that word presenteeism is a word that I really hadn't heard or thought of much before. It's just a way of presenting something. What do you think that actually means, Carolyn? Well, it is kind of an interesting word, and usually we think of absenteeism. Right. That means that you are absent or not present. But here we have presenteeism, and presenteeism, based on our lesson, seems to be when someone is at work, they want to work, they want to be there, but they're not able to perform as well as they should or could due to health problems. Okay, so they're present uh, in their body, but their mind is not all there, you know. They're they're not absent from work, but they're present, right? Yeah, that's so, right. And, <clears throat> yeah, it's interesting because this is, I think, kind of a new term. Yeah. Absenteeism <clears throat> has been a term that's been around for a while, but I've never heard of presenteeism no. before. So I think this is a, an interesting... They kind of made it up, maybe. Hold maybe on. so. It's an interesting question <clears throat> to talk about. Right. Yeah. But... There is a name for that. They say what is ailing some businesses. 
or what is hurting them when you're ailing is something's wrong, you're hurting. That's right, yeah. And what is ailing these businesses and their employees? It is presenteeism. And, and that's um, when people show up for work. That's right. But they don't perform at full capacity. That's right. And, and that and happens a lot. Yeah, it does. And they the didn't author, eat breakfast, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> maybe so. Maybe, maybe. Who the, but the author wants to clarify here. Um, he's saying not to be confused with those people who like to waste time. So what he's saying is uh, presenteeism is not about people who are not effective at their jobs because they just don't feel like working. Uh, it's mm. these people actually do feel like working. They want to do their jobs, but they are not at okay. their best. Because there are people who do sometimes waste time at their desk because they, they watch videos. You walk by their desk and see, oh, oh, they're watching a video. has nothing to do with their job. We're not talking about those people, are we? No, not today at least. Okay, yeah. not today. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. not today. So what kind of people are we talking about then? Well, we read here that the reason for presenteeism is underlying health problems. Mm -hmm. And these underlying health problems could include chronic conditions. And a chronic condition means that it's long-term and something that probably won't go away, like back pain, headaches, and arthritis. So these are things that can be very distracting, right? The person is mm. in pain, mm. and that means that they're not able to function fully, and they're left muddling through the day. Yeah, and I mean, it's, uh, it's hard because, okay, something like back pain is not something that you usually, it's not exactly serious enough that most people consider like, I've got to get medical care for this or something. I just but my it's, back hurts or my shoulder hurts or something. Yeah, so I think it's because, you know, we're bending over towards those computer screens and we don't yeah, sit up straight. That's we, right. They say we sit too long. We yeah. should get up every few minutes that's and right. walk around. Don't you think so? Mm, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of things that we can do. But uh, I think especially right now, Many people suffer from malnutrition, and they might be overweight, and being overweight can cause back pain. It can cause a lot of health problems. What Maybe about headaches? Headaches might be too much caffeine. Or stress. Or stress. Yeah. There are many things that can cause headaches. Maybe staring at a computer screen for yeah. too long. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, arthritis. Mm -hmm. We're sitting and arthritis, there Arthritis, he seems like as you get older, it yeah. affects your bones. and mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So then you can't really, you want to work. You're not trying to look at videos during work. You're trying to do your job, but it's just hard to get a much done because, you know, things bother you. And it's hard to work when you have a little pain, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it, these kind of things, this, these pains leave you feeling like you're muddling through the day. And mm -hmm. uh, muddling, I think, is a good descriptive word. You can just kind of think of about how it sounds. It sounds like mud, kind of like you're just struggling, mm -hmm. like you're just, just barely making yeah, it. Yeah, you're really not making much progress. You're, you sure. don't have much motivation. You're not working effectively. So it says underlying the reason that, you know, this research on this presenteeism is the fact they are assuming that employees, they're saying, I'm sure that these people are not um, trying to just be bad. They're not taking their jobs lightly. Mm -hmm. They want to do better, but they just can hardly do it because of all these little things that bother them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not really purposely trying to just watch videos or not do their job. It's just that they don't feel good. Mm -hmm. Right. And Sure, if you have headaches or back pain or arthritis, it's going to be harder to feel motivated to do something because every time you move, you feel pain. Every time you need to get up to get a book or to check something or to talk to someone, it's going to feel uncomfortable. So, of course, these people maybe do things a little bit slower mm -hmm. than others in the office or slower than they themselves want to work. They want to be productive, but they're unable to. And they get headaches. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people that take pills. You can buy all kinds of pills every time you go to the drugstore. The pharmacist, you can buy pills for headaches, mm -hmm. buy pills for back pains. Yeah. Well, half of the stuff they sell has to do with that. Yeah. But 
you can't keep taking all that medicine all the time. It's not good for your liver. It's yeah. not good for your body. That's so right. what are you supposed to do? Well, that's an excellent question, and we've got another section here called beneficial well-being. Beneficial well-being. It's in employers' interest to see that their workers have access to safer options to such potentially addictive or worse prescription painkillers like OxyContin. One popular approach for relief from neuromusculoskeletal issues like low back and neck pain, drug-free chiropractic care, has actually been incorporated in on-site wellness programs. By companies like Google, Apple, and Facebook. Well, of course, it's beneficial. I mean, we know it's good for any employer if the people,、um, you know, can feel better. But they want to have a better, safer thing than just pills. Now, I've heard that more and more people are getting addicted to. Pills in America because they they just they don't feel good and they take pills and pretty soon that they, they just have to take those and and it just affects their whole body. It does and it's really awful what is happening with the addiction to painkillers in particular because these substances are very、uh, damaging to the person's body and. It's also getting harder and harder to get a hold of the painkillers that not just people who are addicted want to take, but people who need painkillers can't get them because there's such just this epidemic of addiction, and they're afraid. Oh, if we prescribe this painkiller to you, then you'll get addicted too, and so we're trying to reduce this so no one can have them.、And、well, that's right. And sometimes, you know, you think this is good because everybody's taking it, and all of a sudden you read, oh, oh, this is very bad for you. Yes. And you, and you don't know what to do, or you take one and it's not enough, and then you take two and then three, and right, oh, it's and, bad. And it just kind of becomes worse and worse, and so. Really, painkillers are something that should be avoided as much as possible. So, if there are alternative treatments that are much safer, then maybe we should try those first. So, one thing here that this next paragraph tells us about is that a lot of people are trying this drug-free chiropractic care. It's a popular approach for this. It will relieve you from this muscular skeletal issues. In other words, part of our body that aches. And they said that some companies now have somebody go around. Looks like a young person here in the picture,、uh, helping people to relieve the pressure. Yeah, that's right.、Uh, it can help relief、uh, relieve the neuromuscular skeletal issues. And、uh, that's a really long, confusing word, but basically it means all of your nerves, your muscles, and your bones all together. So one thing that's interesting is a lot of painkillers. Okay, maybe they are prescribed for headaches and stuff like that. And you might think, how is chiropractic going to help me if I have headaches? But it, actually, I have heard that even if you have some kind of like tension in your muscles or like some kind of pain, your neck. Yeah, in your neck, it can give you headaches too,、yeah. and so there is there the whole body is really connected in an amazing way, and、uh, that's where I believe these chiropractors come in is that they do understand some of these things about how our bodies are connected and how they can help us get back into a like a better position, a better posture, and and just have a better. Healthier、right. body.、Yeah. Have you ever been to a chiropractor? I have been to a chiropractor. I've、mm. been to the chiropractor many times, and I really enjoy actually receiving chiropractic care. I do feel a lot better after going to the chiropractor.、Mm. Um, I have some back pain, 
And so the chiropractor helps to relieve that. And I feel much nicer afterward. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. chiropractors and acupuncture, all of those things, mm-hmm. they relieve that pressure on you, yeah. don't they? Absolutely. I can give mm-hmm. uh, one little story. Uh, I, I've never been to a chiropractor, but you I did. Ne- you've never been to a chiropractor? I haven't yet. I can't imagine. Can uh, you imagine mm-hmm. that? Well, can't. He's too young. young yeah, that's, that's what it is. Well, <laughs> believe it or not, one one. Phase of one time in my life, I did a lot mm-hmm. of computer work. I was working as a freelance uh, web designer and graphic mm-hmm. designer, and I started getting some repetitive uh, stress injuries in my wrist. It's very common if you mm-hmm. are like at as a right. cashier or mm-hmm. using a computer all the time, your wrist starts burning and it's really painful. And I, I went and saw the doctor about it, and he maybe he had some chiropractic training. I don't know. But he actually told me he found out that it was actually the position of my shoulders. Oh. The way that I held my shoulders when I worked was actually causing some nerves to be in an unhealthy position while I was working. And it went all the way down to my wrist. Now, I would have did, never did known that. Or anything like yeah, that? Here, maybe, I, here maybe, I was. Maybe he did have a I was trying to keep my wrist warm and all this time <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about my shoulders, you know. And that's something that maybe a chiropractor chiropractor would be able to help you with, you oh, know, that's to true. tell I you about. I hope you don't need yeah. one for a while. But yeah, yeah, I hope so, but, too. <laughs> but they're nice when you need them. But yeah. some of these big companies like Apple, Google, they're such big, huge companies, and they have so many things that are free, you know, free food at lunch and all. And they also have free chiropractors. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Well, that would be very nice since <laughs> yeah. chiropractors can be a little expensive. Right. <laughs> but they're a certain type of doctor. What they do is they know how to release the pain by, we say they crack your back and Mm -hmm. they kind of move your stuff around, your bones. Yeah, they're able to kind of adjust your Mm -hmm. spine so that it's aligned properly, Mm -hmm. make sure that you have good posture. And if you need further treatment, you can have chiropractic therapy. So they can help you work through the tension in your muscles, realigning your spine so that you don't need to come back to them all the time, but you're able to get treated and then heal. That's true. And, you know, they are a type of doctor. And used to be that people would say, oh, chiropractors aren't real doctors, but they are. They're medical people, too. And so they have to have special training. Otherwise, it would be very dangerous to have them fooling around with your back. Wouldn't that it? is very true. <laughs> so you do want to uh, make sure you do some research, make sure that the chiropractor, if you want to see one, ha- is licensed and has the proper training so that they can safely adjust your back. That's true. You have to be careful. Mm-hmm. But they, it's really beneficial to your well-being. And let's take the next section. It's, it's on page 39. Let's read the last part of our lesson. Doctors of chiropractic, who are highly educated and trained in the structure and function of the human body, use hands-on techniques designed to enhance flexibility, muscle strength, and range of motion. Chiropractic care is a win-win situation for both businesses and their employees, said the Foundation for Chiropractic Progress's Sherry McAllister, D.C. So how much money does presenteeism cost businesses? According to a new report by Global Corporate Challenge, 10 times as much as the $150 billion annually in productivity lost from absenteeism. Now, as we just mentioned, that chiropractors are actually doctors, and they're highly educated and trained. So as you just mentioned, Carolyn, be sure that you go to one that's actually a trained chiropractor that, you know, that he's got the credentials like a doctor. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Yes, you definitely want to make sure that they are a licensed practitioner of chiropractic. Yes, make sure that they are an actual doctor. Because they know how to really make your muscles more flexible and stronger and and the way that you use them, your range of motion. So, you know, what they actually do is to help you to move better, don't they? Yeah, that's right. I mean, in general, uh, 
once we understand our bodies better and when we can like have a better position for our bodies, more flexibility, we'll just feel happier in general and feel like we can do more. Yeah. Well, that's right, because it says if you have the care of a doctor, like a chiropractic care, it's a win-win situation for the business and the employees. Now, you could say the employees, of course, they win because they feel good. Mm-hmm. But, but how can the business have a win? How can you both win? <laughs> well, the businesses win because now their employees are more productive. They aren't just sitting in their chair muddling through the day. They're actually getting things done. Mm-hmm. So the next thing will come up then, if you're in the business, you say, well, how much money does this kind of presenteeism, how much does it really cost businesses. If people come to work and they have headaches, they have back aches, does it really make any difference in our profits? Well, apparently it does. We see here that according to a report by the Global Corporate Challenge, this presenteeism costs businesses 10 times as much as absenteeism it costs 10 times as much as 150 billion <laughs> oh US dollars. I can't even imagine that. <laughs> I'm oh, I'm not even believe. sure what that number is. <laughs> I think that's into the trillions now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, because then after they hurt too badly, they can't even come to work and then you get into this other thing, you get into absenteeism, which is a word that we've heard before. And this is a big problem. If people are gone from their job, that can't get done. You want to finish a project. You say, well, Jack, he's not here today. We can't do it. So then you lose money, see? So the absenteeism part is bad. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the more obvious way that you would uh, think that your business is losing out, right? But that's why it's fascinating that presenteeism is actually like 10 times as much costly that your staff are there. You think, oh, they're doing their jobs. They want to work. They're working. But really, they're not being productive. And it's costing even more than absenteeism. Hmm. So that, that's really a hard thing to handle if you're the HR, the I mean, public relations and manager. Isn't it kind of hard to handle? What, how are you, what are you going to do about that? What, what would you do? Well, it is very difficult to measure presenteeism, right? Mm-hmm. Absenteeism is more obvious because right. the person's not, not there. there. Right. But presenteeism is much more difficult. And I think that's why companies, the, the big three here, Google, Apple, and Facebook, are trying to incorporate other alternative medicines into their health care at the office so that people have chiropractic care at the office and they can just go see the doctor. They don't have to go anywhere special. They don't have to miss work, right? They don't have to be absent for a doctor's appointment. Mm -hmm. They're still at the office and they Mm -hmm. can go see the chiropractor and then they can get back to work because they feel better. That's right. Don't go go and tell your company today that we got to get hire one here for us because they might... (laughs) They might say, hey, you better not listen to that program. <laughs> well, but, yeah. you know, if you have yeah. a big, big company, it's okay. But most little companies can't yeah. afford to hire a chiropractor, That's can true. they? Mm. That's true. You know. Sadly so. You know. But, but I, I do good. think it's important for mm-hmm. businesses to recognize that when employees are gone for medical leave – right? They're going to see the doctor, they're getting treated, that these are really important things that in the long run will actually help the company. Yes, your employee isn't there at the company right now because they're at the doctor, but in seeing the doctor, they'll be able to be more productive in the future, and that's very valuable. And then when they do their work, their minds will be crystal clear, Mm -hmm. right? And we like to have crystal clear minds so that our minds are not muddled up with other things and say, I, I can't finish this because I, I have a headache. Yeah, exactly. And I think the maybe the lesson that I take away from both the days from yesterday and from today is sometimes even though it seems like you're taking time away from work, taking time away to laugh, to go out and walk in the park, to get some chiropractic care. If you can do your work more effectively, faster, if you can do more work, then in the end, you're doing more than if you were just 
sitting at your desk the whole time, not taking a break. That's so true, isn't it?、Mm -hmm. And of course, you don't want to be like the one that we mentioned at the beginning that you are actually watching videos. You shouldn't. <laughs> That's another whole subject, isn't it? <laughs> That's right.、Yeah. But we're not talking about people who kind of do that. You know, that's kind of irresponsible in the way. Right. But you know, when people have a headache or a backache or something, well, you know, it's very hard for them. They're trying to work, and、yeah. so try a little. Chiropractic or acupuncture, or some sort, they help you with that. And it's good if the companies can be sympathetic to that, don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. So I think maybe chiropractic is just a, a new subject for you. If so, maybe you can look up some more. There's a link at the bottom of this article, so you can、uh, learn a little bit more about what it's like.、Um, it, It's something that it's worth it's worth considering.、Yeah. And don't forget to look at our QR code, and not only the introductions, but there's skits, there's information on there. So check it all out on your cell phones, and be sure to come back for a new lesson. And thanks for being with us today. I hope you all feel well and have a great time. Me too. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. See you next time.